course, uh, let's take it from a political perspective. And of course, we're looking at uh, faced with uh, the debt crisis. Do you think or how can uh, debt uh, transparency and accountability uh, be improved to prevent corruption? You've made mention about the fact that corruption is eating and has eaten deep into uh, the economies of uh, developing nations or especially in Africa. So do you think or how can debt transparency and accountability be improved to prevent this corruption and embezzlement of funds in developing nations? Okay, thank you very much again. For but Clarice, uh, before getting to respond to that question, I want to say that there is no nation that actually develops because of debt. Debt don't develop a country. It is true we are living in a global world and maybe we have projects we want to execute but i think also that there is need for african nations as a group of collective nations to be able to get to a place where they define what development is to them which i think is different from what europeans consider to be development we do not have the same challenges we do not have the same situation Europeans have different projects they should be handling, which it has nothing to do with us. You see, there is a project which I listened to Gagami actually projecting there about uh, the uh, that is uh, talking. About, it's, it's related to environmental protection or whatsoever. Africa does not need environmental protection because Africans protect environment necessarily not by. Uh, it is part of our culture. Those who destroy the environment in Africa are those who come, they need wood. They get cutting down everything that they see in the, in the, there. They, 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 they want to exploit gold. They dig everywhere. They, it is not the job of Africans. Those who are doing that destruction are not Africans. And so we need to get to a place where we know what our projects are and which ones to sponsor what developmental project we want to handle then we engage in and also coming back now to the question you asked if we want to talk about reducing corruption within uh, the continent as well as particular countries in africa we must be able to put down some rules and regulations which permit uh, 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 corrupt individuals to be punished you see, in other countries around the world, corruption is punished with, with capital penalty. It's a, when I talk of capital penalty, it's dead. And as long as individuals know that capital punishment will be used as a way to, soft, to, to, to punish an individual who is corrupt, it will restrict corruption. When J.J. Rollins actually took over uh, uh, Ghana in the 80s, what he did was he was very, very rugged. Let me use that word. He executed corrupt persons. I mean, when I say executed, he gave them capital punishment in the public. It frightens a lot of persons who are coming into leadership and as a result of that he gradually built and transformed ghana from the very poor nation it used to be in the 80s to a developing and fast developing african country of recent corruption has entered back in ghana that's why ghana is one of those countries that need debt relief as we are talking, because in 2022, it sank. <laughs> Why? Because of corruption. We are talking about Africa getting to a place where it can choose to develop by being able to fix in-house. We must fix things in-house. You see, we, we might blame all, you can take loans at very high rates and see use them effectively and still be able to service those loans later 
<laughs> it was their death. But look at it. When you have individuals who think of themselves, corrupt, no accountability. For example, we want to use Cameroon as a nation where the constitution, which is supposed to be the highest law of the nation, in, I think, uh, somewhere, actually demands that if you are to take office as an elected official, you have to declare your assets. But nobody, from the head of the nation down to the mayors, nobody declares elections. And that has de declares the assets, I beg your pardon. And that has been normal. And they are sitting in power. Where do you think the money that is meant for the development of their communities go to? They swindle it. Embezzlement takes place. There is no accountability that is presented. But if death penalty was placed on the ground, a lot of persons will run away. I want to use Cameroon in the 80s, 70s and 80s. Aijo was given also, he used to punish corruption with capital punishment. Corruption was rare. And that is why before he left power, he left power, Cameroon was a debt-free nation. Within five years of the leadership of the present leader, Cameroon sank. The talk of devaluation. And Cameroon entered into a state where we needed help. What happened? The IMF came imposing stop production, home production, that today we are struggling to bring back. Agriculture, which was supposed to be the basic industry of the country, was cut off so that we could import. That's a spend, spend more money. We borrow more money and spend in, in empowering, empowering European companies. We need to import issues. That is very problematic. And so that's why, you see, when we talk about IMF, I always say that IMF, World Bank, those are banks or financial institutions that were created to service European tribes, not the world. And anything about out of it, naturally they will need to ask you for more interest because that is was not meant, they were not created for you people. And that's why it's diplomacy. And that the diplomacy, okay, look at it. Today we are talking about struggling to renegotiate issues. The West wants to negotiate without bringing in China, which is a major player in Africa. There is no possibility for them to take decisions which will affect Africans without bringing in the Chinese and without working along with the Africans. And so there is need for serious diplomacy to solve that. But as you talked about, the political situation in Africa is what needs to be restructured the most. We need leadership that works for the good of the people. We need leadership that thinks of the development of the continent, not leadership that thinks of self-development. People will think of themselves. Most of those who come into power are actually coming into power not because they want to serve the nation, but simply because they think it is a means to are enrich you, themselves. Uh, sorry to, to cut you short. Are you in other words saying uh, that uh, uh, the, uh, the type of politics uh, uh, actually practiced by African uh, politicians is uh, the reason why some of these countries find themselves in a uh, debt crisis? If yes, so, so what is the way forward? I, 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 I should be talking about the kind of policies, not even the politics, because when we look at the politics that is in Africa, Africa does not really have a, a political system that they, 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 they are implementing. They, 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 after post-independence, post as we, are we call it, mm -hmm. they, were impl they were forced to implement borrowed political okay. strategy yes. systems which were not theirs. And that has remained for over 60 years. Mm -hmm. And so you do not expect any change to come from you being told to do. You don't say you are independent and you are told what to do. And that plays measurely on it. We must get to a place where we become independent, meaning that you must get, first of all, you see, before you cooperate with somebody, you must be separate. Africa had never been separated from the colonial powers. 
And so as long as they are not separated from the colonial powers, you can't claim that they have anything that they are running. And that is why in Africa, Europe, African leaders still go to report to European leaders. If you would like to know, 14 French-speaking nations in Africa go deposit reports to the French if they need to have support from French. I think perspectives are changing. And, and the, the that is the reason why you see an uprising that is taking place where sure, African sure. nations, uh, recently Niger, mm -hmm. send them out. Mali had done so. Burkina Faso had done so. It is because of such. Sure. Look at what happened. That played majorly where the, 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 the French, the French club is majorly the financial decision power for Africa. So how do you expect them? And now they are struggling to get into the, the, the other English speaking and other the, 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 the nations in Africa. So we need to get to a place where we, 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 we define our own policies Absolutely. that govern us our developmental policies and be because intentional about implementing the policies yes because i'll be sincere africans do not have developmental process, uh, policies that they solely sit down and define for themselves they are imposed developmental policies they are told what to develop and <laughs> if you are told what to develop you do not expect to do what you want so we must leave that bench where we are imposed on decisions to start this making decisions Oh, okay, yeah, it's very imperative uh, that uh, uh, the leadership of Africa uh, that equally understands uh, the terrain sees what is practical. Uh, like I always see, a democracy is what works for the people and not what is uh, the people are being told to do. 